When aspirations of fame fall short, the only logical answer is to try again, right? If you were given the opportunity to compete in another disgusting, death-defying, and dangerous game show for the chance to win a million dollars, would you? All right, if you said yeah, you're in good company. 15 of the original 22 campers were allowed to return for that reason, but this season had a new twist. Instead of taking place at a summer camp, the competition was set on an abandoned film lot. All right, folks, this is your official spoiler warning for Total Drama Season 2. Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and this is Total Drama Action Challenges, least gruesome to most gruesome. Total Drama Action is the second season of the Total Drama series, following Total Drama Island. And with the recent announcement of two new seasons, we knew it was time to rank season two challenges. Calm yourselves, no one's dead yet. With the gross out imagery, daring stunts, and wicked rivalries, this season lives up to its predecessor. The rules for this ranking are similar to the first. If there are multiple challenges taking place in one episode, they will be counted as one. Each challenge must have a set of rules that are to be followed by the contestants and must follow the theme of the movie for that day. As the title suggests, we will be starting off with the least gruesome challenges and working towards the more shocking ones. These first challenges are the ones that we believe would be the easiest to complete. Taking the top spot for the least gruesome is the production day challenges. These were the only challenges this season that were not based on a movie genre, but rather the behind the scenes and making of movies. Each team was asked to race to the top of the man-made 1,000 foot cliff, paying homage to the diving spot from Camp Wabanakwa. Once they arrived, campers had to set up their scene and memorize scripts given to them by Chris. Movie 1 was the story of an elderly lady considering her long life, while Movie 2 told the tale of a thug who tried to go straight but couldn't resist the lure of the streets. The winner was determined by which team could get the ex-army corporal chef to show any type of emotion. A twist came when teams realized their scripts were switched, and they created sets and costumes for the wrong movies. When I was a young schoolgirl in Poland, this challenge is in the spot for the least gruesome because acting out a play, while not the most fun thing to do for some, is not exactly complicated. Many summer camps and game shows require competitors to compete in an acting challenge of some kind, so this seems almost predictable. Not to mention the rule set chef could show any emotion, not necessarily the expected one. For these reasons, it takes the number one spot. Coming up next is the Monster Movie Challenge. Competitors were asked to get to their trailers as fast as possible from the gate entrance. This seems simple enough until they realized that Chef was hooked up to a 40-foot animatronic monster and was trying to squish them at every turn. The goal was to get to the trailer without being detected by the monster. Once everyone arrived at the trailers, contestants were split into guys and girls teams and asked to go to the catering trailer. Upon seeing the bounty of food before them, Owen proceeded to eat everything in front of him without hearing the rules for the challenge. Chris explained that teams were supposed to find the key amongst the fake set food, and because Owen coughed it up, the guys won the challenge. The dude ate foam core and whack! This challenge takes a spot for the second least gruesome because it seems tame for a total drama episode. Contestants just ran around the whole episode and were never in danger of elimination. Next is the mystery theme challenge. While eating breakfast, contestants found a USB in a breakfast taco and decided to view the footage on it. While spouting off the challenge rules, Chris hinted at the combination for the bank vault he was hiding in that they had to find and open. After releasing him, each member was required to meet at the train station movie set once they acquired DNA samples from one of the other remaining contestants. This had to be in the form of hair, spit, fingerprints, etc., and the goal was to not let anyone else get your DNA. Once aboard the train, the lights flashed on and everyone saw the dead body of Chris once again. With the help of the previously gathered DNA evidence, players were required to figure out who done it and the winner was the person to nab the culprit. The prince don't lie! This challenge is so low on the list because it seems difficult but enjoyable. Contestants are essentially playing a real-life version of the game Clue, and in the end, it's all for a reward. And the next spot is the Alien Movie Challenge. Participants had to get through a maze, retrieve alien eggs, and return them to the trailers without being detected by Mama Alien, or Chef in an alien costume with a slime-filled paintball gun. While teams were not yet established, Chris provided a few people with tracking devices to help them find both the eggs and Chef. 
After leaving the maze with their eggs, contestants were subjected to Chris in a helicopter with slime bombs locked and loaded. Glad I don't have to clean it up. The winners of the challenge were deemed team captains and chose the teams for the competition. This is another turnaround challenge where contestants play for a reward rather than to eliminate one another. This challenge is slightly higher on the list than the last challenge because there is an added stress of getting the unarmed egg back to the trailers. While they may not be aliens, we don't want to see what happens if you crack them open. Up next are the rock and roll biopic challenges. For these challenges, contestants needed to know how to rock out on the guitar, handle vicious paparazzi, and trash out a hotel room. First, everyone had to play a guitar simulation game, where each note is represented by a colored button on a plastic guitar and must be pressed in the correct order. Each time a note is played wrong, the player is mildly electrocuted. Players fall off individually until the best performer remains. Next, each person is required to walk the red carpet and make it backstage while avoiding obstacles like groupies, autograph hounds, and the bouncer. Nice touch giving the groupie your number. The winner of this challenge is determined by the best paparazzi photo. Finally, each contestant had 30 seconds to trash a hotel room to the best of their ability. This series of challenges, although a little bit painful, sounds like fun. I think everyone has fantasized about trashing out their hotel room with no consequences or walking the red carpet and signing autographs. Next are the beach movie challenges. After being asked to change into bathing suits, contestants had to stand on a mechanical surfboard for as long as possible. Kind of like a mechanical bull. However, Chris and Chef added a total drama sabotage as always. There were live sharks in the water, Chris wielded a seagull gun, and the AC was cranked way up to freeze the contestants. My lady fans couldn't handle the loss of this perfect behind. In the second challenge, teams competed in a sandcastle building competition, with Chef, the resident king of the dunes, playing as a judge. Halfway through building, Chris attempts to threaten the losing team with a tiebreaker that hasn't been approved yet. When the tiebreaker proved to be necessary, it only ended up being a dance-off between one member of each team. This challenge isn't too physically taxing, but being forced to wear a bikini while pelted with seagulls is cruel. In the next spot are the superhero challenges. First, each contestant was asked to create their own superhero persona. Chris and Chef judged each hero based on the originality of the costume, how rocking their power, and how cool their name. Next, heroes had to test their super prowess by competing in a physical challenge to prove they could save the day. Each person had to leap over a building in a single bound and onto a mattress, roll out, and catch a sack of potatoes falling out of a high window. And finally, each superhero walked across a power line during a Chris made meteor shower. The winner of the challenge was the one to walk across the fastest. This challenge could be fun in theory, but Chris and Chef make everything a little too dangerous for their own pleasure. These challenges, though, are nothing compared to what is to come. Coming up next are the horror themed challenges. We've come to know Chris McLean as a sadistic and over the top host, and this episode proved to be no different. As soon as the contestants arrived, arrived at the top of the cliff, they were greeted with a dummy resembling Chris falling directly onto a studio light. Obviously, everyone was horrified, but Chris quickly reveals it to be visual effects and makeup, leading into the rules for the horror-themed challenge. For this challenge, teams picked one person to be a serial killer, while the rest were screamers. The goal was to create the loudest scream, but Chris decided to play along and pose as a killer as well to create even more mania. Once the winners were decided, losers were asked to sleep in the dining hall for the night, but only after hearing several scary stories about the haunting of the film set. Track any psychic phenomenon using these ghost meters. The winning team was then told to scare the losing team enough to make them run out of the tent. While the winner was determined by Chris and Chef, DJ decided to leave voluntarily, making this a low-stakes challenge for everyone else in the end. This challenge is a little terrifying, but if you know Chris, you should expect some level of gore at this point, and know to never trust him. Moving on to the medical theme challenge. Players were required to stay up all night studying medical textbooks and eating pizza to get into the mind of a real med student. The next morning, players were asked diagnostic questions to test how well they studied, and for each correct answer, a player was dunked in a giant bat of liquid containing eels and the body parts of a cadaver. The goal was to get every part of the body, resemble it, and raise it up. Awesome! Don't let it touch my hair! A twist in this challenge appears when members of each team start exhibiting symptoms of a rare illness. 
and they start to believe they're all infected. This is because DJ and Chef spiked the pizzas the contestants ate the night before with chicken foot powder. This challenge is more difficult than the ones before because contestants were required to stay up all night beforehand and memorize specific medical information. Not to mention they all believed they were infected with the rare illness for a good amount of time, were subjected to electric eel zaps, and ate chicken foot powder. This challenge lands in this spot because, despite all these gruesome factors, it was once again only a reward challenge. Next are the Stone Age challenges. Contestants were encouraged to bring out their more primal instincts by dressing in loincloths and animal skins from the Paleolithic period. In the first challenge, each team had to build a fire using just flint and found firewood. I make fire! Ooh, ooh, ooh. To get the wood, team members had to face angry killer beavers with tusks the size of railway spikes. Thankfully, no one was injured, and the first team to light their fire wins a pile of larger bones for the second challenge. Next, challengers face off against one another with their bones while balancing on separate rocks above a tar pit. While trying to knock one another off, the killer beavers returned, and they brought prehistoric pterodactyls with them, and they attempted to pull contestants off the rocks. While no one is voted off in this challenge, it's higher than the ones before it because of the level of danger. The animals are essentially trying to maul the contestants at every turn, if not kill them. Plus, contestants have to wear uncomfortable outfits the entire time. Now we have the sports theme challenges. Upon waking up, contestants were required to go on a three kilometer jog and then eat a lot of spaghetti. If you recall, this is a classic tactic when it comes to Chris McLean's stunts. He tries to tire the players out with a workout, then allows them to fill out on catered food, then makes them do something incredibly physical. This challenge is no different. After lunch, contestants then have to push Chef across a football field, run through mousetrap-filled tires, and bear crawl across a mud pit with barbed wire, all just to establish the seeds for the actual challenges. Assuming they were in the order of skill, the weakest players competed in slow-motion boxing. He has a lot of experience getting hit. Next, two players played a game of badminton, then the next two contestants clashed in Greco-Roman-style wrestling in a kiddie ball pit. Lastly, the two strongest competitors battled in a slam dunk contest, unfortunately resulting in a tie overall. Because of the tie, each team had to come up with a cheer for Chris to judge. Naturally, he gave the win to the team who praised him, and the other team voted someone off. We can't forget about the Western theme challenges. Contestants were required to mount a steed from atop a 100-foot diving board, what Chris deemed saddle practice. After more than a few injuries resulted in a tie, and Owen drank all the ammo and the water guns intended for the quick draw, contestants competed in calf roping. One team was assigned cowboys and the other was calves, with the goal being for the cowboys to rope the calves and the calves to get away from the ropers. Chef was the judge, though not really necessary because in the end, the calf team overcame and roped the cowboys. I can get out of this anytime. These challenges are higher up on the list because of the level of embarrassment players faced, as well as the number of injuries they caused. The next spot goes to the Prison Movie Challenge. Each team had to pick one prisoner on the opposing team who competed in the challenges. First, each prisoner had to stomach as much slop as possible. However, DJ added way too much love to his team's dish, making it super easy to finish. It's like I'm eating an angel's wings. The winning team received a golden shovel for the third challenge. Next, the prisoner pushed a laundry cart containing the rest of their team through an obstacle course. Lastly, teams had to dig their way under the prison fence and escape to their boxcars. The team to make it back first won. Moving on to the Kung Fu Movie Challenges. The remaining four competitors, minus Owen, were split into guys and girls teams and asked to pick a trainer and a fighter. Teams are then given four hours to train in their kung fu style of choice. In the showdown, the fighters were put into robot suits, while the trainers were given joystick controls that operated the robot's legs and arms. Stop kicking yourself! Stop kicking yourself! After one team is defeated, the remaining two players compete for a reward. Each person had to carry a glass of water to the tallest mountain and boil it for tea as payment for the bonsai tree they had to return to Chris. If the player got to the top and didn't have enough water, they were eliminated. This challenge seems tough, but all for a giant feast. Next are the fairy tale theme challenges. A princess was decided based upon whose foot fit into the glass boot provided by Chris. The remaining five contestants were then deemed knights and had to attempt to rescue the princess by getting past Chef, the terrible toothless troll. Knights were required to walk across a bridge while blindfolded and being pelted with apples. 
for those who made it across successfully, fight to the death awaited. One of the knights was required to slay the dragon in order to win, and then save the princess. After rescuing the damsel in distress, the two were required to sword fight to determine the overall winner. And now, we have the Bank Heist Movie Challenges. Teams were forced to break one member out of the bank vault on set, and while they were provided with all the tools needed, one team forewent the entire thing to move on to part two. Next, they had to make it to the first national bank of Chris and rob it. The winner was the team to get there first and reveal that Courtney was returning to the game. And we're all exceedingly happy about it. After she was assigned a team, everyone had to find their getaway cars before the cops arrived. As it turned out, the cars were at the top of Cliff Wabanakwa and in pieces, ready to be assembled. The winning team was the one to make it across the finish line with their assembled vehicle. Moving forward, these challenges are becoming slightly life-threatening. Unlike the first season, not every challenge had an extreme level of danger, but it definitely had its fair share of challenges that made competitors feel like they were gonna die. Now we have the space-themed challenges. At the beginning of the week, each contestant received a package from their friends or family in the outside world, which served as a way to distract them for the rest of the challenge. Next, each contestant was required to spend the night inside a rocket hole that simulated zero-gravity conditions. All was well until the middle of the night. A hole was discovered in the wall, and contestants were given 10 minutes to plug it or risk oxygen depletion. After a safe return the next morning, each player is then asked to ride the Vomit Comet, with the winner being the one who lasted the longest without throwing up. That was totally disgusting! How could you do that to me? This challenge may not have been life-threatening, as much of the conflict is made by Chris, but the contestants don't always know this. In an emergency situation, their minds default to reacting appropriately, rather than assuming it's a trick. And for these reasons, it makes its spot higher up on the list. And the next spot are the war movie challenges. First, contestants were asked to jump out of an airplane yet again. While Chris may not have been the pilot this time, contestants were led to believe they were much higher up in the air than they actually were, and were given no parachutes. After some contestants jumped willfully, and many more were forced off, they found an old mattress waiting about 10 feet away. In the next challenge, teams competed in a giant game of Capture the Flag, but instead of a flag, it was a chest. Show! Winners were allowed to look inside the chest, as well as win invincibility. Each team is given a base camp area and encouraged to capture the other team, much like they would in battle. We won't spoil what mind-blowing secrets were in the chest, but no, it was not worth the possible PTSD. Just before the bronze medal, we have the disaster movie challenges. Imagine trying to compete in any type of challenge while inside a disaster simulation, and on top of that, your host is sabotaging you along the way. Both teams experienced this when, in the first challenge, competitors were asked to complete an obstacle course during an earthquake. The first team to finish won, and the best two out of three won a reward for the next challenge. Along with the ground moving beneath them, Chris released lava at the top of the obstacle course to slowly seep down, and then pelted everyone with golf balls that represented a hailstorm. In an effort to slow teams down, Chef threw a very large book and broke Owen's jaw. Because of the injury, Chris declared Owen's team the winners, even though the other team was a clear winner in this case. In the second challenge, teams had to survive a sinking submarine and escape before water filled the entire cabin. Well, that was a pretty exciting day, huh? In the end, the winner was only given a reward, an unwanted trip to British Columbia. And for this reason, it doesn't make the top three. Finally, we get to the top three. Taking the bronze medal for most gruesome challenges this season are the spy challenges. After being picked off one by one and relocated to the bottom of a pit, competitors were greeted by a hologram of Chris. Teams were abolished this week, so every person played for themselves in this two-part challenge. After Justin stumbled upon a secret door, everyone took an elevator up to a room where another Chris hologram was waiting to tell them about an artifact they must try to find. One person was expected to acquire this artifact without setting off the laser alarms all around the room. Once the winner was determined and given a reward of wire cutters and a grappling hook, the hologram Chris warned everyone that the building was set to explode in 30 seconds. Each person had to escape the seemingly about to blow building, and when they got to safety, Chris revealed that they were in fact going to be okay. I was just playing with you. Again. In the last part of the challenge, contestants were required to deactivate a stink bomb, 
While Courtney decides to share her wire cutters to allow one person to deactivate their bomb, contestants quickly realize that not all the bombs were wired the same way. Taking the silver is the Animal Buddy movie theme challenges. For the first part, contestants had to pick their animal, then give it a makeover in their likeness. With the choices being a shark, a raccoon, a chameleon, and a bear, we can see why this one was a little difficult as well as dangerous. Next, contestants, along with their animal buddy, had to find their way back to the film lot, with no map, through a 10-mile hike. This challenge was of course timed, and the winner of the first challenge had 30 minutes shaved off their final time. For the contestants with a raccoon and a chameleon, these challenges seem relatively easy. However, for the contestants with a bear and a shark, they seem almost impossible. Get back here, chum bag! After a weird interaction between competitors and their animals, two people are sent home, making this the only time in the season. And another reason, it takes silver. Finally, the top spot for most gruesome goes to the pirate movie challenge. The remaining two contestants wake up tied to a mast, and they have to help each other get free. Then, both members must make it through an obstacle course and a treasure hunt through the entire season's challenges. The obstacle course consisted of swabbing the poop deck, shimming up a grease pole to fly their designated flag, and finally, they must aim cannonballs at an intended target. After finishing the obstacle course, competitors went to the treasure hunt, where they were required to either correctly answer a trivia question or reenact the challenge from whichever movie set they were on. This challenge takes a spot for the most gruesome because, assuming you answer every question wrong, you have to go through the entire season again. Release the hounds. And they can smell blood. Every challenge had its own level of difficulty, but attempting to try every challenge again in one day sounds rough. All right, but what do you think? Let us know which season two challenge was the most gruesome. Be sure to hit that notification bell and binge our total drama videos. We've already covered the first season's gruesome ranking, as well as the first three seasons in our Good to Evil format. And most importantly, stay wicked.